Black people have been a very important piece in the building of America. We've been in every aspect of every part of the building of this country. We fought in every war. We've came, we've come home from World War I and World War II was even taken out in our uniforms. Uh, we fought to get our proper GI bills. Uh, we fought against redlining. We fought against so many different things in this country just to have our dignity. Um, we fought against presidents. We've marched. We've done everything in this country. Whites can say, hey, um, we have family members that fought in every war, but so can black Americans. Well, in today's time, uh, we're watching immigrants come into this country under this Democratic Party. And a lot of things that were supposed to be afforded under federal law to black Americans that wasn't being given to black Americans or allocated to black Americans are now easily just going to these immigrants. They got free health care. They're getting free housing. If they come into America, they slip into America illegally and they go into a home. It's even if you the homeowner, it's hard for you to get them out of the home. And you have all kinds of homeless and all, all kinds of things going on here in America and under the Democratic Party, they're showing the American people what they could have done. And now with uh, the election uh, looming and coming soon, and you have Donald Trump, you know, uh, voicing his opinion and, and starting, to be, starting to make a lot of noise. You have Sleepy Joe, Joe Biden now down in Texas on the border, and he's talking. Let's check this out and see what uh, he's talking about now. First 100 days as president, what will you do to create a pathway to citizenship for many undocumented immigrants? That is a big issue for the AAPI community. As you know, 1.7 million face deportation threats. Another 100,000 are young people who are affected by the, the DACA program. So two parts for you. What are you going to do to be more visible? And what do you say to the folks that think you're just going to be President Obama 2.0? And what are you going to do about immigration right when you get in office? On day one, I'm going to send a legislative immigration reform bill to Congress to provide a roadmap to citizenship for 11 million undocumented immigrants who contribute so much to this country, including 1.7 million, 1.7 million AAPI. My immigration policy is built around keeping families together, modernizing the immigration system by keeping families unification and diversity as pillars of our immigration system, which it used to be. Ending Trump's cruel and humane policy at the border to rip children from their mother's arms. Take immediate action to protect dreamers, including the more than 100,000 eligible dreamers from East and South Asia. Rescinding the un-American Muslim ban immediately. Restoring refugee admission in line with the values and historic leadership of our country. Raising the target to a minimum of 125,000 people. Joe Biden doesn't give a darn about the immigration crisis. He wants to lead the illusion as if he cares about it. You see what he just said. Uh, but he wants to lead the illusion as, as if he cares about the, um, the migrant crisis and still stay your president at the same time. But what's happening now is there's a lot of people that's taking things into their own hands. They're not waiting on the government to come do anything for them. Let's check this out. We'll come right back. We actually have uh, some footage of you patching up a hole with razor wire. Tell us about that. And, and you bought it yourself. Why? Well, you know, as the CEO of Vetcom, I help veterans every single day. And I've been on the news talking about veterans getting deprioritized behind migrants. And they're taking their spots in VA hospitals. They're getting their funds um, for all the homeless funds. And I said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm not going to sit idly by and say, especially as a candidate, that I stand for closing the border. I decided to go stand at the border and actually close it. I wanted to go and do something and show the nation that you can actually go and do something. You don't have to sit around and wait for the people that are never going to come. Joe Biden doesn't give a darn about the immigration crisis. He wants to lead the illusion as if he cares about it. You see what he just said? Uh, but he wants to lead the illusion as, as if he cares about the, um, the migrant crisis and still stay your president at the same time. But what's happening now is there's a lot of people that's taking things into their own hands. They're not waiting on the government to come do anything for them. Let's check this out. We'll come right back. No question, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump and you ain't black, I'm not here to tell you to vote for Joe Biden or don't vote for Joe Biden 
or either Trump. That's your choice. But uh, when Joe Biden was being grilled about some of the things that he's done in his past, you know, um, he was he was asked about comments that he made about schools and about things that went on in 1975. We're talking about slavery. He where he made some very controversial statements about slavery. Check out what um, he's what he said in 1975 and, and how the Democratic Party. Uh, on the black side, just forgot all about this. We just let it go and forgave him. Check this out. And talk to you about inequality in schools and race. In a conversation about how to deal with segregation in schools back in 1975, you told a reporter, I don't feel responsible for the sins of my father and grandfather. I feel responsible for what the situation is today, for the sins of my own generation. And I'll be damned if I feel responsible to pay for what happened 300 years ago. You said that some 40 years ago, but as you stand here tonight, what responsibility do you think that Americans need to take to repair the legacy of slavery in our country? Well, they have to deal with the, the look, there is institutional segregation in this country. And from the time I got involved, I started dealing with that. Redlining, banks, making sure that we are in a position where, look, we talk about education. I propose that what we take is those very poor schools, the Title I schools, triple the amount of money we spend from 15 to 45 billion a year, give every single teacher a raise to the equal raise of getting out of the, the $60,000 level. Number two, make sure that we bring in to the help the, the, student, the, the teachers deal with the problems that come from home. The problems that come from home, we need, we have one school psychologist for every 1,500 kids in America. And as you see, he was, he went into dodging the questions and not really answering things directly. He didn't get into specifically to what he actually really said. And when he was asked about reparations, he made it an American thing. He didn't speak about things specifically for black Americans and what black Americans been through. Remember, I told you, our grandparents and great-grandparents fought in every war. Uh, most 95% of black Americans have a family member that was in the military, that did some type of military service that was in the building of America. But he went into education, the systems. He didn't speak specifically as the president of the most powerful nation on the planet, what he would do. But then his, uh, um, his vice pre pre president, Kamala Harris, who's not black American, African American, she was asked, what, was she, what, was, uh, what is she gonna do for reparations? Y'all remember this? Check this out. You support reparations for black people. Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. And we have to recognize that everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's why, for example, I'm proposing the LIFT Act. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African Americans that you would explore. But no, if you look at the, it, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole in the country, right? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris didn't lie to you about anything. They told you straight up, coming in the door, what they was going to do. 
as you've seen from this video. Kamala Harris said, I'm not doing nothing specifically for black people. Anything I do will benefit black people, just benefit. Joe Biden had a whole track record of his history with black Americans from the 70s, from the 60s, all the way up with his friends with Strong Thurmond, uh, doing Strong Thurmond's eulogy. Everybody knew this, but y'all was out there was so mad at Trump. When Joe Biden had a history of hurting black people and positions of power, y'all let him get away with it. He told you what he was going to do. He was going to let 11 million immigrants come into this country. That was strategically being done to replace you. So he used the black vote to replace you with now the incoming uh, 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 Spanish people vote that's coming into this country. He, he usually did it right in front of your face. And he told you going forward, going forward that the Latino community would, have, would be, would ultimately when they become one of the largest groups in this country. And their voting power now is going to surpass the black community. So this is who they are uh, catering to. They're catering to the Latino community because they no longer need you. They no longer need you. And this is what they've done right in front of your faces. Now I'm asking the black community, what are you going to do about it? What now? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to stop this video right here. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think, man. Remember, they didn't lie to you at all. They told you exactly what they was going to do. And you still voted for them. Peace.